I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be going over brand new CSS techniques, the usual roundup of responsive design techniques, and command line tools for web developers. Let's check it out. First up is Simple Grid, which is a bare bones grid created for developers who need a bare bones grid. So this is going to be something that gives you a lot to work with, something that's really complicated and gives no. you everything you need to start doing a CSS it, framework. It, it's bare bones. Okay. Yeah, that's it, Jason. Um, the other cool thing about bare bones grid is that it's it's also responsive. Um, as you would expect with most CSS grids these days. Um, when I was talking to Jason before the show, I said, you know, what, what really is different about this grid? And we couldn't quite figure it out. But the thing is, it's, it is very simple. So it's probably a really good learning tool. If you are trying to figure out how to use something more complex, like Twitter Bootstrap, for example, or if you're just trying to build your own grid from, you know, from scratch. It's also really lightweight, which is you know really nice. Maybe if you're just prototyping a site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and I think it's very important for CSS grids like this to be lightweight, especially when they're responsive and trying to you know deliver content to mobile devices. When you say bare bones, I think of like the word bare and then space bones, like the bones of a bear, rather than a lightweight grid. Jason, you're pretty. <laughs> Next up is Boot Metro. This is a metro style web framework. This is going to include CSS, HTML, and JavaScript if you want to start coding websites like Metro. Uh, this is going to be much more important now that Windows 8 has officially been released. So just, just for a second, Metro meaning the design language used by Microsoft these days. Yes, the design language used by Microsoft. Not It has nothing to do with um, clothes or style or anything like that. Got it. So there's a bunch of different demos on the site that you can go over. Um, one thing that you'll see in a lot of Windows Metro apps is something called this application bar. And you can see it over on the bottom of the screen right here. There's just a ton of different toolbars and things that you can add in to your application. Um, they include different styling for tables as well as drop downs and kind of everything that you would be expecting out of a framework these days. Um, so pretty easy. You can find the link to this boot metro in the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Pretty nifty. Next up is typeset.css. And this is just a style sheet that it's, well, they describe it as a no nonsense CSS typographic reset for user generated content, such as blog posts or comments or form posts, etc. And you can go ahead and click through on the left side here and see the different kinds of styling that typeset.css provides. And it is as described. It's just a really simple set of styling for user-generated content, just so you know there's not stuff that's breaking the page or you know going really far outside the bounds of a particular content area, etc. So Pretty nice. So this is something that you would use maybe instead of a, a full framework if you just want to reset the styles on your blog comments and you know maybe forum threads, um, anywhere where people can actually enter stuff. You just use that part rather than something like Bootstrap or Boot Metro, which is a whole complicated framework. Exactly. It's just really pretty simple and straightforward. So next up, we're going to check out Web Trends. So like many websites, the site for Time Magazine has gone responsive. And we've seen this happen with Boston Globe, USA Today, which we covered on a previous episode, and now Time Magazine has made their website responsive as well. It almost seems like making a website responsive is a web trend in itself. That could be the case, Jason. So if we go ahead and look at Time Magazine's website, it looks like a pretty standard news website, but if we go ahead and resize the browser here. Whoa! And make it a little bit smaller. You can see how as we resize it, time will go ahead and respond, not the concept of time itself. I'm talking about Time <laughs> Magazine. That would be crazy. Anyway, 
Um, looking at the, the mobile version of time here, I, I think that there's a couple things that they actually didn't get quite right. I really would much rather see uh, actually just this view, just the, the top news story with a picture and, you know, the, the top headline, or maybe something more like this, where I get the top four headlines. If you look up at the top here, they have the logo, which I think is a little bit too large and branded. Then they have this search box here, which I don't really think is appropriate to show in this particular view. I think it might uh, go better down towards the bottom or something, uh, just because when people come to a new site, I don't think they're really looking to search immediately. I think they're looking more so to browse. It's more of kind of a, a passive activity. Kind where, of more like people are going to be consuming the content rather than be actually trying to enter things into it as soon as they hit a site. Exactly. I, th I think people are just hitting a site to go ahead, or hitting a new site to go ahead and browse and just see what the latest stuff is. They don't necessarily want to go there to immediately search for an article that they have in mind or search for a topic that they're interested in. So that seems a little bit off. I also think these drop-down menus are a little much. I think they could have consolidated this in some other way, maybe put these topics down towards the bottom, or I don't know, the drop-down menus just seem wrong for, for this small of a screen. Now, um, if you could change one thing about this, what do you think it would be? I think I would just try to simplify it. I, I think what's apparent here is that they took a pre-existing website and then tried to make it responsive, which is a perfectly legitimate approach as long as you, you do it right and you make the mobile version really simple. The reason you want to do mobile first when you're doing responsive web designs and then working your way up to those desktop layouts is so that you concentrate on the core experience and make something really, really simple and then you add things on top of that as you go up to larger screen sizes. So I think they kind of got that a little bit wrong here. It looks pretty cluttered for a mobile website. I mean, this big feedback button is kind of ridiculous for a mobile site. So anyway, there's a chance you could go wrong with a responsive site, so. Hmm, interesting. So if you want to check this out, maybe the old version, would that be going back in time? That's, that's very good, Jason. Thanks. I'm impressed. I'm proud of you. No problem. All right. So that was web trends. <laughs> uh, next up, we have an article on Smashing Magazine called Powerful Command Line Tools for Developers. Uh, this is actually a great article if you're maybe just getting into how to use the terminal or the command line. Check it out and get reacquainted with some of the different tools available to you. Uh, the first thing that they go over is a tool called Curl. Curl will fetch web pages, files, and kind of anything you need from the command line. There are a ton of different options and things that you can do with Curl, and there's a, a nice introduction on here. Um, there's also introduction to other tools such as ngrep, netcat, sshuttle, which is going to be for query, um, doing SSH tunneling to your different servers, which actually also works with DNS. Um, finally, there's also something called Siege, which is an HTTP benchmarking tool. You can do this to do testing of your web application from the command line. So it'll go through and simulate a bunch of different rapid connections to your web application. From there, using that data, you can figure out what you need to optimize inside of your app. Uh, anyway, it's a great roundup, and they actually tell you how to use these tools on the site. So check that out. That's really handy. You know, one thing I've said on the show before, and I want to re-emphasize, is that I feel like a lot of designers are sometimes afraid to use the terminal. They think it's just like really scary, and you know, they'd rather stick to their HTMLing and CSSing and Photoshop and stuff. But it's a really, really useful tool, and it can make you uh, a lot more independent and make you, um, you know, a really powerful asset to a team of designers and developers. So I guess if I were going to redo my Halloween costume and I was going to a party full of web designers, I, would, I could be a terminal. That's, that's right. And that would scare everybody. That, that, is, that is pretty scary to some people. Next up, and I'm going to say this wrong, I think it's Maki Su, Maka Su. It's Japanese. I have nothing to offer. <laughs> um, basically, this is a set of menus or drop-down menus and I'll go ahead and toggle this so you can see. Wow, it rolls up. How these fold up. 
and how these fold back down. And each one of these is just a different style or different pacing of animation. And they're titled after different types of sushi, which I think is uh, pretty cool. Um, if we go ahead and go over to the GitHub page, it says it's an experimental CSS 3D drop-down concept, and you can actually use it as, you guessed it, a jQuery plugin. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, what the heck is the application of this? And I think you'd want to go ahead and use this on pages that might be a little bit more flashy in your app. So say for example, you had say for example you had a web application that was, you know, like a subscription app and you had a plans page and you wanted to show all of the features of the app, you might say, you know, learn more and you can go ahead and click and it'll fold down like a sushi menu and show you all of the features that you'll get with each different kind of plan. So I think it's a little bit flashy, but you know, sometimes you, you do kind of need that. It's an interesting experiment. Yeah, yeah, no, as an experiment, it's, it is very cool. It's really cool to see what you can do with, do with CSS these days. Definitely. Uh, so finally, over on Kaushik Gopal's online journal, there is yet another noob guide to Git. Now, if you don't know Git or you're looking to learn, this is just a fantastic starting point with casual references all the way up to intermediate and advanced uses uh, of Git. Now, who, uh, who's Git? <laughs> I've heard of this person, but I, I don't know who, who this person is. Git is a uh, source control management system that's um, pretty popular, you know, works with GitHub. And there's actually a walkthrough of how to use GitHub on here as well. Very cool. So if you know somebody who is, you know, wanting to learn Git, definitely check out this page, which again, you'll find in our show notes. Awesome stuff. Now, Jason, what did we learn today? We learned nothing, Nick. Absolutely nothing. We learned that the web is a barren wasteland full of time-wasting opportunities and cat pictures. You should go to a library. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if you want more information on anything we talked about this week, head on over to our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And of course, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. And if you'd like to check out more videos like this one and learn about web design, web development, business, iOS, or Android, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.